Hello Year 6, welcome to your science session for Featherstone High School. My name is Miss Maroof and I will be guiding you through today's induction session. So during today's session we will be looking at two different things. The first one is looking at hazards within a science lab and ways in which that we can prevent these hazards from happening. The second part will be looking at how to use a Bunsen burner and how we would safely carry out a flame test. I'd like you now to all please turn to the first page of your science induction booklet. You should see the same diagram I have on the screen or in your induction booklet as well. And in addition, you should have a table underneath your diagram that has two columns, one that says hazard, one that says how could it be made safer. Now, what I would like you to do for your first task is I want you to have a look at this diagram in front of you, this scenario. It's a class that is attempting to carry out a science practical. Now, I want you to look out for any hazards that you see. Now, what I mean by hazards are things that are potentially dangerous. So things that could be dangerous. I want you to look out for them and circle them. For example, there's one that I can see straight away. This student here, he's eating a packet of crisps. Now that is dangerous to do within a science lab. Anyone have any ideas why? Well, in science, we use lots of different chemicals when we're carrying out our practicals. And some of these chemicals are actually harmful to us. So we have to be ca very careful when we are handling them. Now, if we've got some of these chemicals on a table, for example, and we do wipe our tables down, however, you might have parts of the chemicals still left on the table that you missed. If you're coming in, um, touching the table, touching your exercise book, moving things around on your table, and then taking out food and eating it, and putting your hands in your mouth, if you have some of that chemical on your hands, you are going to ingest that, you are going to take that in, and it could be harmful to you, it could make you very sick. So we do not have any food or drink in a lab. So if you look at the table underneath your diagram, on your induction sheet, you can see the first hazard, I've put down this example, of the hazard being someone is eating in the lab. How this is made safe, so this is a general rule within science, is we do not take out any food in a science lab. So we don't take out any food and we definitely do not eat any food within a science lab. That way we prevent, we stop this hazard from happening. So what I'd like you to do is take the next five minutes to look at this diagram and circle any hazards that you notice, write them down in your table underneath your diagram and then where it says how it could be made safer, have a think, how could you stop that hazard from happening? What should be done? What could you do to stop it from being a hazard? Let's have a look and see all the different types of hazards that you might have noticed. So I'm going to circle some of the ones that I can see very clearly and you can check to see if they're ones that you have also noticed. So we have our first one that we have as an example of someone eating within a lab. Now another one that I can see is this student here. This student is heating some kind of solution up using a Bunsen burner and is looking directly at this solution. So they have a boiling tube and they're looking directly into it. Now as this solution is heated up, it's going to start bubbling. And what could happen? The bubbles could splash into his eyes. Now that is very, very dangerous. Okay. The hazard here is that this student is not wearing goggles. Whenever you're carrying out a science practical, you must always wear goggles. In fact, I can only see one student, this student here next to him, that is wearing goggles. No one else in this science class is wearing goggles. If you're not wearing goggles within a science practical, you would not be allowed to carry out a practical. So that is my first hazard that I've noticed and the way in which we solve this hazard is that we must always be wearing goggles whenever we're doing a science practical. And another point is you should never be looking directly into a boiling tube. It should be facing away from you. 
Right, the next hazard that I can see is this student here seems to be reaching out, not even looking where they're reaching their arm out to, but I can see a broken piece of equipment here. It looks like some broken glass. Now, if this student is just putting their hand out and they touch that glass, they could cut themselves. So that is very dangerous. Now, what we do in this scenario, if you have broken a piece of equipment, which obviously a student has done here and maybe try to hide it behind this book, is if you ever break a piece of equipment, you must tell your teacher straight away. Do not try to hide the broken piece of equipment. Do not try to clean it up yourself. You must always straight away go and tell your teacher. Your teacher will then safely take the broken equipment away and put it in a special container that we have for broken equipment. That way, no one has any risk of getting hurt by that piece of equipment that has been broken. Another thing I can see is this student here swinging on a chair. This is very dangerous again. They're also holding a beaker filled with some kind of solution. As they fall backwards, that solution is going to fall all over them. So a way in which we stop this from happening in a science practical is that we never sit down during a practical. We always stand up. So whenever you're carrying out a science practical, you'll be tucking your chairs in and you'll be standing out throughout the whole practical. That prevents this type of scenario happening. Another thing I can see, which is the last one I'm going to do, is these two students running. Okay, These two students are running around this lab, which is a very busy lab. You can see everyone's doing something. Now, running in a science lab is extremely dangerous. You, in fact, should not be running in any, any classroom, but especially in a science lab when you have all these different pieces of equipment lying around, um, practicals being carried out okay it's very dangerous they could fall over they could fall into someone else that's carrying out a practical they could fall into pieces of equipment so it's very dangerous a way in which we stop this from happening is we have no running within a science lab on this slide i have a table um, showing the hazards that i have just gone through it's exactly the same table that you have underneath your diagram so have a look to see if there's anything you want to add that you maybe have missed. You could put it into your table. There will be other hazards possibly that you have noticed that I have not put down. If that is the case, please put your hand up and share it with the rest of your class. Now, when you're studying science in secondary school, there are three different parts to the topic. There is chemistry, biology and physics. So when you're studying chemistry, there's one piece of equipment that is used a lot when we're carrying out practicals. There's a picture of it on the right of this PowerPoint. Do any of you know what this piece of equipment might be called? It is a Bunsen burner. And we use Bunsen burners to heat mixtures and liquids when we're carrying out uh, chemical reactions. And the Bunsen burner was named after a German chemist called Robert Bunsen. And I have a picture of him here at the bottom of the slide. And he invented the Bunsen burner in 1855. We're now going to go through the next five slides on this PowerPoint to see how we can safely light up a Bunsen burner. So watch and listen carefully to each of the steps. Now, before we start any practical within science, we always make sure that any long hair is tied back. We also make sure that everybody is wearing safety goggles. Even if you wear glasses normally, you would need to wear safety goggles on top of your glasses. Your normal glasses are not a substitute for safety goggles. Third thing is that we would make sure that any long sleeves are rolled up. We don't want anything getting into the way of the practical. And last but not least, we will make sure that everyone is standing up during the practical and that all chairs are tucked in. Once that has been done, we can then start our whatever practical we are doing. So let's look at the first step in setting up a Bunsen burner. So the first step is that we must put our Bunsen burner onto a heat proof mat.
our second step is that we would then join our Bunsen burner to a gas tap. The third step is that we would make sure that the air hole on the Bunsen burner is closed. This is so that we are using the safety flame. Okay, before you use your Bunsen burner to carry out any type of practical, you would need to make sure your Bunsen burner is set to the safety flame. That is a bright orangey glowing flame. That way, when you are not using your Bunsen burner, you can always see the flame. Fourth step is to turn on the gas tap which will allow gas to travel through into the Bunsen burner. And then we would light a wooden splint and hold it over the chimney, so over the top of the Bunsen burner. And we hold the splint slightly to the side so that when your wooden splint that has been lit hits the gas, it will light up. Now you should see an orange flame on your Bunsen burner. So the last step that we do is we open the air hole so that the flame that we now have is a hot blue flame. And that is the flame that we work with and that we use when we are carrying out science practicals using the Bunsen burner. Now that we've gone through the steps of how to safely light up a Bunsen burner, I'd like you to turn over your page in your Year 6 induction booklet to where it says using a Bunsen burner safely. And what I would like you to do is, I want you to match up the descriptions that you have on the left hand side of your sheet. You should have five boxes. I want you to match them up, okay, whether they are step one, step two, step three, step four or step five. And then I want you to then match it to the picture that goes with that step. So that's the next task that I would like you to do. If you turn to the next slide, I will give you the first step as an example. So this is what you should see on your year six induction sheet. Now, like I said in the previous slide, I would like you to match up these five, each of these five descriptions to the correct order that they go in. So if we look to start with step one, reading all these different descriptions on the left hand side, I can see that my first step is the one right at the bottom. Before you start, make sure your hair is tied back and your clothing will not get in the way always wear safety goggles. So that would be my step one. So I would use a ruler and pencil, match it up to step one. Then once I've done that, I would look at the five different pictures that I've got on the right hand side. Now I can see that there's a picture of goggles and a picture of a jumper here. So I would match step one to this picture because we spoke about wearing safety goggles and we spoke about making sure clothing doesn't get in the way. So that's step one. Use the next five minutes to work out the following steps. Now that you've had time to go through these steps yourself and put them in the correct order, let's look at the answers. So, step two, what did you get? Put your hands up, you can share your answers with the class. So step two is make sure the Bunsen burner is on a heat proof mat and then connect the tubing to the gas tap. That's my step two. And it matches up to the picture of a Bunsen burner on a heat proof mat. Step three, what did you get for step three? Step three should be close the air hole to ensure that you're using a safety flame before lighting. So you should have matched up your arrow to step three and then linked it to the picture of a Bunsen burner with, there's a, with an arrow pointing to the air hole. Step four, let's have a look for step four. 
you should have got hold a burning splint above the chimney of the Bunsen burner slightly to the side. That would be your step four and match it up to a picture of a matchstick that has been lit. And the last step, step five, would be open the air hole on the Bunsen burner in order to get a hot blue flame to work with. That should be matched up to step five and you should connect it to the picture right at the bottom, which has a perfectly lit Bunsen burner. How well did you do? Did you manage to get all five? Now that we have looked at how to set up a Bunsen burner safely and correctly, we are going to look at how we carry out a flame test. Now, flame tests are used to find out which metals are found in different things. And we can use flame tests because different metals will give off different colors when they are put under a hot flame. This is the same as in when we have fireworks. Okay, we have different metals within the fireworks and that's how we can get the different colors when they are lit. So the following slide will show me carrying out a flame test. Can you now please go to the video clip of me carrying out the flame test and can you look out and notice the different colours that each of the metals that I burn using the Bunsen burner give off. And can, when you notice the colour, can you please record them in this results table that you have in your Year 6 induction booklet. So remember to look out carefully for the different colours that each of the metals will give off when they are being burned. Now that you have seen a flame test being carried out, let's find out what colours you notice when I burnt each of those metals on the Bunsen burner. For sodium, you should have noticed a yellow orangey coloured flame. For lithium, you should have noticed a crimson maroon colour, sort of like a bright red. For potassium, this one was a little bit more difficult to notice. You had to look very, very closely. And if you did manage to look closely enough, you should have seen a lilac flame. And the final metal that I burnt was copper. And I'm hoping all of you would have noticed that lovely green color that the flame went. And finally, can you please all stand up if you feel confident in identifying hazards within a science lab and then also giving suggestions to help make them safer, so ways in which that you can prevent these hazards from happening. Also, if you feel confident in how to set up a Bunsen burner and how to carry out a flame test, please stand up as well. And we have come to the end of our science session. I hope you enjoyed that year six, and I look forward to meeting you all when you start Featherstone High School in September. Bye.